Today we're going to be making a little bit of acetone using calcium acetate that I made in a previous video. The procedure is pretty straightforward and we effectively just need to heat up the calcium acetate and it will eventually break down to form calcium carbonate and acetone. This used to be the go-to process to produce acetone, but nowadays it's not really used and the cumin process is used instead. What I think is kind of interesting is that the main target of the cumin process isn't acetone, but it's actually phenol and acetone's a byproduct. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent and I'd like to get started with things now. The only ingredient that we need for this preparation is calcium acetate and I'm using 180 grams that I produced in a previous video when I made calcium acetate from Tums. Very simply to start off, all of the calcium acetate is added to a 1 liter round bottom flask. Once everything's been added, I shake the flask to level out the calcium acetate and I set it up for distillation. The entire apparatus that I set up can be seen here. Below the flask I have a heating mantle which will provide the heat for the distillation. I have a condenser column with water running through it and on the right I have my receiving flask. With everything set up, I turn on the heating mantle and I start to heat things up. As things warm up, the first thing to come off is a little bit of water and you can see it fogging up the flask a little. To prevent heat loss and help some of the condensate make it over, I insulate the flask with a little bit of aluminum foil. As we continue heating, a distillate will start to come over, and this is going to be mostly water, but I think there is a little bit of acetone in there. The calcium acetate that I used wasn't pre-dried, so it makes sense a little bit of water comes over first. If we look at the walls of the flask, we can still see a lot of water condensing on it. As time passes though, and we continue with the distillation, we can see the amount of water on the walls decreases until eventually it's all gone. As the water slowly disappears, the vapor and the condensate gradually take on a yellow color. Eventually, the walls of the flask will be pretty much free of any water condensation and will be condensing a faintly yellow liquid. In theory, what should be happening is the calcium acetate is breaking down into calcium carbonate, which is a solid, and acetone, which can be distilled off. Unfortunately, some side reactions are occurring and they give the distillate this yellow color and a very weird smell. I'm really not sure what's giving it the color or the smell, but if you guys have any idea, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Unfortunately, I don't think I've really smelled anything like it before, so I can't really give an example or an idea of what it really does smell like. Eventually, the distillation slowed down a lot. The distillate became very dark yellow, and a lot of white smoke started coming over. I replaced the receiving flask with a new one to see how much I would collect after this point, and I came to the conclusion that it's not really worth continuing. I let it run until absolutely no more distillate came over, and I think I collected something like a milliliter, so it's kind of a waste of time. One other thing to note is that this cloudy vapor slash smoke that's coming over is flammable, so you have to work in a very well ventilated area. Here I just demonstrate quickly by collecting some into a boiling flask and lighting it on fire to show that it is indeed quite flammable. After the distillation has finished and I've let everything cool, I start to poke around in the distillation flask and you can see that we're left with a nice fluffy powder. In theory, if we used pure calcium acetate, we should be left with mostly just white calcium carbonate in the flask, but you can see here that that's clearly not the case. The calcium acetate that I used was the stuff I got from Tums, and I think there was a lot of organic material still left in it, and it just burned and made this carbon ash. You can see here how much I collected in the second part of the distillation, and hopefully you can see that it's not very much. To continue and to get our acetone, I combined the two fractions that I got from the distillation. The 250 milliliter flask was a little bit too big, so I decided to transfer everything into the smaller 100 milliliter flask. At this point, what we have is a mixture of water, acetone, and side products, and we're going to have to distill off our acetone to purify it. I dropped in a stir bar to the distillation flask, and I set it up for fractional distillation. I wasn't able to fit the entire apparatus in one shot, so to show you guys the whole thing, I split it into two separate shots. To get things started, I turned on the heating mantle and the stirring, and very shortly afterwards, things started to boil. 
As things boil, a vapor front will start to move up the column, and it's a little hard to see here, so I pointed it out using my finger. The next thing that I do is I use a little bit of aluminum foil to insulate the fractional column. This is done to make sure that the column stays hot, and so that the vapors can make it over to the condenser. When we look here, we can see that vapors have started to make it to the top, and some are actually making it over to the condenser. Acetone boils at around 56C, and this is what we want to collect, but a lot of stinky stuff actually comes over much below this. On the left, I quickly show everything that came over below around 53C, and after 53C, I swapped out the receiving flask. After it was swapped out, I proceeded to collect everything that came over between 53 and 56C. The boiling point of pure acetone is around 56 degrees Celsius, so this is a good indication that we are in fact collecting acetone. What we do here is we keep collecting the acetone, and as soon as the temperature rises above 56 degrees Celsius, we stop the distillation. At the beginning of the distillation, everything that came over was nice and colorless, but as the distillation continued and we got near the end, it took on a little bit of a yellow color. At the end of the distillation, we look at our distilling flask, we can see that it's strongly colored and there's a distinct separate dark layer above. In the end, I was left with 31 milliliters of slightly yellow and quite weird smelling acetone. I don't really plan to use this acetone for anything in particular, so I didn't continue, but if you want to use the acetone in synthesis, I would recommend distilling this at least a few more times. Just for fun, I test out the flammability of the acetone that I made. As acetone normally is, it's extremely flammable, but the thing to note is that you can see that once the fire goes out at the end, there is a residue that's left behind. This is a strong indication that the acetone is not pure, and like I said before, if you want to use it for anything in synthesis, I would strongly recommend distilling it at least a couple more times. On a very sad note, this experiment actually destroyed both my heating mantle and my 1 liter round bottom flask. I really didn't know my heating mantle was capable of this, considering I wasn't even near max power, but apparently it can melt glass. As the flask cooled, it actually cracked in half, and I guess this kind of made it easier for me to get inside. Anyway, I used the spatula to scoop out a little bit of the black powder, and I put it on a watch glass. What we're doing here is verifying the presence of calcium carbonate by reacting it with a little bit of hydrochloric acid. When calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid react, they produce calcium chloride, which is a salt, but they also produce CO2 gas. Once the hydrochloric acid is added, you can see that a lot of gas is produced, and this is a strong indication that calcium carbonate is present. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about making acetone from calcium acetate, and I hope you guys enjoyed. In general, I think dry distilling calcium salts to produce organic compounds is pretty cool, and I might explore this in some future videos. Again, I'd like to extend a big thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. All of my videos are shared 24 hours before with all of my Patreon supporters before I post it to YouTube, and everyone who supports $5 or more per video actually gets their name at the end as you see here. I would also like to reiterate that I only charge patrons for the long in-depth videos and none of the short ones are ever charged to anyone. Everyone gets those for free. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm not 100% sure what the next video is, but it should probably be posted later this week.